What's going on everyone? Welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to run a object detector in real time on your webcam and on video using YOLO version 3 and TensorFlow. You're going to learn a lot in this video, so stick around. Hope you enjoy. Let's get right into it. So first things first, where can you find the code for this tutorial? So the code for this tutorial is actually the same code um, used in one of my previous videos called how to build object detection APIs. Um, and yeah, the code is in the same repository. Uh, so you're just going to go to the AI guys code object detection API. I'll leave a link in the description below to the code as well. So you can just go down there and click it. If you haven't already seen my video on how to build object detection APIs, there's a lot of really cool, useful information that I urge you to go check it out. Here is a small snippet from that video on object detection APIs. So in order to run this correctly, you're just going to go ahead and copy the link to clone the repository, open up any command shell or prompt and just go git clone and type in the URL there. And that's going to go ahead and download the code for you. It's really quick. It's not too big, so that's perfect. And now we can get started. In order to install all the dependencies for this repository, we're going to follow along with the readme itself. It goes through the steps in order to get set up. So getting started, it's recommended that you use Anaconda. Anaconda is this platform for data science that really allows you to uh, automate a lot of the dependencies and it takes care of them for you uh, and creates these environments that you can use and switch between. Um, so if you don't have Anaconda, I actually recommend going and installing it. It's easy and free to download uh, and get set up. You can also use pip installs for this uh, tutorial. So I'll show you guys both methods. So it's not the end of the world if you can't get Anaconda figured out. But I do have Anaconda. So I'm going to go to my bash shell. And if you're just brand new getting Anaconda, you're going to want to do Conda init and followed by either bash because I'm in a bash shell or you can do PowerShell and this will activate Anaconda within your uh, command prompt or whatnot, whatever you're using. I already have done that. So there's no need for me to do that. And I actually need to CD into the repository. And now to create your Anaconda environment that will install all the dependencies for you. There's two different ones. There's one for CPU and one for GPU. I have GPU on my machine. So you're just gonna write Conda and create dash F. And now I am going to, mine is called Conda GPU.yaml. And this is a file within the repository that lists all the dependencies and calling this just allows you to go and download them. So I'm going to hit enter and this is going to run for me and it's going to collect all the the libraries and packages that are referenced within that Anaconda uh, YAML file. Um, if you do not have GPU, it's the exact same command, conda and create dash F, and it's conda dash CPU if you're trying to run this with CPU. But if you have a GPU on your machine, I would obviously recommend it's a lot faster and you'll see that these videos will get a lot more frames per second uh, with the GPU installed. So this is going to take a couple of minutes to download all the dependencies. We'll hop back when it's done. So once your Anaconda environment is created, you will see this prompt to say to activate this environment. And it, you'll see that it successfully collected and installed all the dependencies. So to activate your environment, all you do is Conda activate. And then the name is YOLO v3 dash GPU. If you did the CPU version, it'd be YOLO v3 dash CPU. And you just go ahead and run that and it's now activated. But like I said, you can also just pip install the requirements if you don't have Anaconda and all you do is pip install dash R and it's either requirements.txt if you're on CPU or requirements dash GPU.txt and that will do it for GPU as well. The good thing about Anaconda is it um, takes away some of the frustrations of getting the proper CUDA versions and whatnot. Uh, so I recommend for GPU, if you're trying to activate uh, this tutorial with GPU, I would highly recommend just taking the time to download Anaconda. It makes it a lot easier, but for CPU, you can easily just do 
pip install dash r requirements.txt. But we have our conda environment activated. If we ever wanted to deactivate it, you just do conda deactivate. But we need it for the tutorial, so we're going to leave it. So now we're going to go ahead and get the pre trained weights. I'm going to show you an example of pre trained weights, pre trained tiny weights for faster frames per second, and also a custom detector that I've made. So we're going to go ahead and get the normal weights by clicking here in the README, download the official pre trained weights, and we're going to get the YOLO tiny weights by downloading here. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And we're going to go ahead, there we've got tiny weights, and we're going to go ahead and click here and download the pre trained full sized weights. The pre trained weights out of the box come already trained on 80 different classes that it can detect. So I recommend trying this one first as an intro. It's called the Coco dataset. So if you look up Coco dataset classes, you'll be able to see a list of the 80 classes that it can detect from person, car, dog, a bunch of household items, sports equipment, and stuff like that. So I recommend going and checking those out, see if those meet your needs, and then come back and I'll show you how to do a custom train uh, model for detector and video and webcam. So we'll go through that as well. But out of the box, the pre-trained has 80 classes. So it's really good for a bunch of different uh, use cases. So once our items are downloaded, our weights, we're gonna go to our downloads. And we're just going to copy both the tiny weights and the normal weights. You could use one or the other. I'll show you the benefits of both the full version being that it's better detector, but slower and the tiny is faster, but not as accurate. Um, so then you're just going to go to wherever you downloaded the repository. Here is mine. And you're going to go into the weights folder and just paste these in. Oh, it looks like I already had this downloaded. So I'm just going to change the name. It, this should just be YOLO v3 dot weights. Um, and yours should come down like that. But make sure that you have YOLO v3 weights or YOLO v3 tiny weights. Both will work. So the next step is to actually load your weights as a TensorFlow model. So you're just going to run the command in the command in your shell. So it is as easy as for the normal dot weights, it is as easy as Python load weights dot pi. So we're just going to go ahead and run that. And that's going to convert our YOLO version three weights into a TensorFlow version of uh, TensorFlow model of those uh, from those weights. So we're going to let this go ahead and run and we'll come back when it's loaded. So we have successfully converted our tiny YOLO dot weights into a TensorFlow model. And last but not least, I'm going to show you guys how to convert a custom object detector dot weights into the TensorFlow model as well. So in my one of my previous videos, you can watch it here. I have taught you guys how to train custom object detector and produce a YOLO v3 dot weights file. Um, so that's going to be used in this video. I'm going to use the exact same one that I created in my YOLO v3 in the cloud video. I'll link the description to previous videos I've done that can help you to get to this point if you need the help. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and it's the same command, Python load weights.py, add the weights flag. And first I'll show you guys that I have added my custom weights fo file to my um, weights folder. So it's there. So you got to do that, put it in the weights folder, and now you can Call it so dot slash weights yolo v3 underscore custom last dot weights that's what mine is called just put it to whatever yours is and i'm gonna output it to dot slash weights and this is going to be called yolo v3 dash custom dot tf so these always have to end with tf because that's where the tensorflow model is going to be outputted um, and last but not least this is a new flag that you need to add it is num classes. And this is going to be however many classes your custom object detector is able to detect. So mine in my video, you'll be three in the cloud. I trained it for five Safari animals. So I'm going to set that to five and we're going to go ahead and hit run. So we're going to let it run and it's going to hopefully run successfully. And then it should have converted my custom trained weights into a custom TensorFlow model. 
So we'll just let it run here and I'll show you guys it working successfully so that you know you can do this as well. So there you have it. We have now officially converted YOLO weights, YOLO tiny, and a custom train detector's weights. So now we are finally ready to run our models um, in real time on our webcam or on a video. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. The documentation is in the readme of the repository. So if you scroll down a bunch, you'll find it here called the running just the TensorFlow model. You can do it with images as well. I show here, but this video is focused purely on um, webcam so or video. So we're just going to go here and we're going to do a Python detect video detect underscore video dot pi and you're going to go dash dash video and you would point this to the path of your video so we can do data slash video slash video dot mp4 and this is actually where the video um, this video will is in the repository so this this will work for you as well and if you want to save the outputted video, um, you can do that as well. So I will output it to the same folder. Data slash video. And I think that's all we have to do. And I'll call it output.avi. There we go. And we're just going to go ahead and run this. And by default, it will run with the YOLO v3 full.tf file. So the full, slow, but very powerful and very accurate detector. So that's what it's going to run with by default. And I'll show you after how to run it with the tiny and the custom. So you can see here, it outputs the video. And it's showing us on screen the frames per second that it's getting. And you can see that it is kind of slow. It's running at about 10 frames per second. Um, if you're running this on, this is the GPU version, imagine that. So if you're running it on the CPU version, it will be about two to three frames per second and really choppy. But with the GPU, it's still okay. Um, it's 10 frames per second, not bad. But you can see the full model is extremely accurate. It's actually getting the people on the street with high precision. So that's good. And now I'll show you the difference when we run this with the dash dash tiny flag and the dash dash weights. So we have to actually now point it at our dot slash weights and we have to do YOLO v3 dash tiny dot TF. And make sure you're doing it to the dot TF files here and not the dot weights, it won't work like that. So we have the tiny flag set, make sure there's no space there. And we have the weights flag set. So we're going to go ahead and run that. And you'll see that this time it's extreme. It's a lot faster. It'll be hopefully around four times faster um, than the normal. Yeah, you can see that it's running at 40 frames per second. So real time, um, extremely fast in real time, but that the detections in the bounding boxes are slightly off. It's still detecting the people within the screen uh, accurately, but the bounding boxes are kind of off and the just proportions are off. It's not as accurate, but if you're just trying to create something that can detect within the image, it still works extremely well. So it works. Um, and those are those. And now I'll show you with the webcam itself. So you take away the tiny, you can do tiny if you want. Uh, you can still do output, but for the video flag, you now just put a zero. And zero will, it, it knows that that's the webcam. Um, and I will still actually put the output to, this time I'll actually show you guys the output and I will do it to data slash video slash output dot AVI. You have to save it as AVI files. Um, and we go ahead and run that. So I actually got an error running that because I had my webcam on to record. So I've now disabled my webcam and I'm going to run it again. Um, and hopefully it should work this time. And you'll now, now you'll see me uh, through the webcam itself. So this will open up the webcam and it'll run the model on the webcam itself. So hopefully it pops open in a second. 
And there we go. So we can see we still get the same kind of frames per second. It's grabbing the chair in the background and it can do all the detections. I put my cell phone up, it's grabbing it. And you can do this exact same with the tiny and it'll be even more real time. Um, but yeah, so there you go. You've got the webcam now. Hopefully this isn't laggy on screen. But yeah, so that's pretty cool. This is detecting on my webcam live. And if you did it in the tiny, it would be about 40 frames per second. And you just go ahead and click Q, Q button on your uh, keyboard to go ahead and shut that down. So now we've shown you webcam, video, and YOLO Tiny, and now it comes time to show the custom detector. First, I'll just quickly show you that I did indeed, where I pointed to the data video, does indeed save my detections video, uh, and it will do this for all of the videos as well. So nothing to worry about there. It's just wherever you put that output to, it'll have saved that video with all the detections. So that's awesome. And let's get into the custom model. So for the custom model, you also need to copy over your dot names file. Um, here, let me just open this for you. And the dot names file is the file that contains all the classes on each line. So these are what I can detect with my custom detector, elephant, giraffe, hippo, tiger, and zebra. Um, so copy that over to data labels folder, and you'll see that the coco.names is already there. That's why you can already do the pre-trained one. But you need to now go to Python, detect video. And now we need to do a bunch of flags. So there's a lot of flags for this. It's going to be weights. And we will now point to our weights and our YOLO v3 dash custom dot TF. We are going to do our output to the same spot, our data slash video. And we're gonna call this giraffe.avi because it's gonna be a video of giraffes. And now we are going to do the video flag and we are setting this to data slash video slash giraffe.mp4. And we need to now set the num classes flag as well. So you see there's a heck of a lot of flags for this one. So it's five and now the dash dash classes. And this is where you point to your data labels object dot names. Let's see if I can get that clear for you guys. So Detect video, you need the weights flag pointing to your custom .tf model. Output is optional. You can output wherever you want and save it. The detections video, dash dash video flag is where your video is. And num classes and classes are what you need to add as well. So I didn't train a tiny model, but you can train custom tiny models that are fast. Um, I just did a regular one. So let's see if this works. So we trained our so it's going to go ahead and load the video of the giraffes walking in the background that I have saved to my device. This video won't, this video won't be uploaded with a repository because it's just towards my trained version. You can train versions toward tiny. Oh, okay. I guess this video file is huge. And I don't think I can resize it. <laughs> so we're going to wait till the end of the, it finishes. And then I will go and show you the saved output and show you that it indeed did work on my custom detector to detect giraffe. So if we go back into where we saved it, the video to, we will see our custom data video. Uh, and the giraffe is the one that's saved with the detections over top. So my model for this was pretty garbage. I only trained it for about 30 minutes in order just to get it up and for the video. Um, but you can see that it is working on my custom detector, which is the point of showing you guys this. You can detect on your custom detector uh, in real time using any video of your choice. I'm not going to upload this video, but um, try grab a video from somewhere else, try it on your custom detector and it should work. Um, 
It's really cool. Uh, and I want to show you guys what I am currently working on. It, and you'll see in, in a upcoming video. Um, so I'm going to scroll back and go to, I'm actually creating a object tracker. I heard a lot of you guys comment about looking for an object tracker. Um, so I want to show you guys exactly what I'm working on and this will be available soon. So I'm using a library called deep sort, which allows you to track objects and I've implemented it into uh, in unison with the OLO v3 model so that it can track and detect objects throughout video. Uh, so that's what I'm kind of working on right now. I just need to tweak it a bit more um, before it's done. And also let me know in the comments what more you want to see with this tracking. So this is the tracker in action. It's a little slower, but you can also do it with tiny and it actually tracks objects throughout the uh, frame. This is actually a slow motion video. So that's why it seems super slow as well. Uh, but yeah, you can see it's actually tracking them through the frame, all the objects and keeping them uh, tracked. And it's actually going to be able to learn um, using the deep sort, uh, the, the kind of features of the person or whatever you're tracking. So it'll memorize them. So if they leave the frame and come back, it should find them again, like this guy that keeps disappearing at uh, 19. Um, so yeah, this is really cool. This is what I'm working on right now. I should have a video up shortly, but also let me know in the comments down below what more you want to see implemented with this real time webcam and objects, whether you want me to output the detections to a text file or something like that, comment down below what your needs are. And if a bunch of you are commenting, I will implement it and keep you guys posted. But thanks again. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of how to run your detector using TensorFlow on real time webcam or video. I hope you found it interesting. Please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It means a lot to me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.